Welcome back for another video. In this lesson, we'll be going over 3D Mill Tutorial 10. So this is actually the tutorial. Uh, we can take a look at the drawing here. Uh, so here, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, so here's what we got. So uh, this is going to be kind of a contoured surface that we have here. And we're going to use a new method for making this. We're not going to revolve. We're not going to extrude. Uh, in fact, what we're going to do is uh, a command called loft. And loft actually uses three profiles, two, actually two or more profiles, um, to kind of blend together over a distance to create a surface or a solid in this case. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I am going to create a solid with this, not a surface. In the past, again, I, you know, usually create surfaces. Which is a little bit easier, but you don't. We don't work with surfaces as much. Generally, we work more with solids. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and just kind of come up with a plan here. So first, what I'm going to do is I need to create this profile here. Uh, I need to create this profile, and I need to create this profile, and then I need to to loft them together. So to do that, I'm actually going to start on the right side plane, and I'm going to take this into the x negative, and I'm just going to translate everything to um, top left-hand corner like I normally would. I don't know that your book has you do the translate, but I'm going to do it just because I'm thorough, and I I'd like to make everything as though I was actually making it in a machine. So, uh, well... Getting a little premature with getting rid of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is start out with this one because this is the right side view. So the right side view is going to be at zero on the right side. So we'll start with this. And it looks like there's some there's a very large radius in this corner. I'm going to start with creating that circle. So that circle looks like it takes both of these radii. And then um, we have a straight line going across it, and we have a, another radius blending to it, tangent. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, my levels, or actually my planes. So let's change that to my right side plane. I'm actually going to view it as my right side, and... I'm also going to work on it as my right side. So on my construction plane, I don't really care where my T-plane's at. I'm not using that right now. Anyway, it's just my tool plane. Uh, but my graphics view and my WCS is still on top. So it gives me this X, this normal XYZ coordinate system that I'm used to. So I can still work XYZ. I don't have to worry about swipping or, or switching around my numbers so that they correspond with, uh, you know, the way that the planes actually are now. So let's draw that first one on that plane. So it looks like it's just two and a half. And oh yeah, we want to put this radius in. So 1.25 radius, and it is one and a quarter over by a quarter up. So let's go to wireframe, and we're going to go 1.25 comma 0.25 enter, and it is a 1.25 radius. Okay, so we'll zoom in on this, and I'm just going to create my escape, and go to my quadrant point, down, escape, quadrant point, down, escape. All right, um, and then I'm going to draw my straight line across as well which the height of that is 0 0.75, so I'm just going to go 0, 0.75, enter, and draw a straight line across, and then I'm going to trim all this up. Oops, didn't want to trim all that. All right, trim, trim. So that looks good. And there we go. Okay, so now all I need to do is add my radii. There's quarter-inch radii on this. And hit check and there we go we have that shape and that is our right side okay so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this section a which is in the center and it's gonna be um, a negative 2.3125 from where I'm at right now so I'm gonna actually put my negative Z level on here 
So I'm going to go, I'm actually going to change my graphics view to isometric. I'm going to go back to my right side view, make sure that my construction plane is on there. It's a little hard to draw like this, it's a little weird, but I also don't want to conflict with this geometry. Even though I'm putting on the Z negative 2.3125, even though I'm putting that in here, I can still snap to this level. So I, I can overlap geometry. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to work on my isometric view, my graphics view of isometric. Um, so this one here, it looks like um, I'm going to start out at... I'm going to start out at 0, 0,25 and I'm going to go to 0, 0 and then I'm going to go to uh, 2.5, 0 and then 2.5, 0.25 and that gives me most of my graphics and then, or sorry, most of my geometry and then I'm going to put in this radius here so that's obviously centered. Um, that's basically what it's telling us there. I know it should probably be better defined, but it's not. Um, and then to the center is a quarter inch minus, or subtract a quarter inch from 0.95, which is 0.7. So it's 0.7 to the center of that circle in the y-axis and one and a quarter in the x-axis. So we're just gonna say, circle is 1.25 comma 0.7 enter and our radius on that one is 0.25 enter and I'm going to hit check and all I'm going to do is snap there and snap to there and hit check and then we're going to trim this up oops don't want to quite take that much uh, whoops now I got out of it Wireframe, divide, there we go. Okay, so there's that profile. Uh, next, we're gonna go and change our Z to negative 4.625. And now we're gonna drill all this left side profile, which is basically just a rectangle with two quarter inch radius on it. So it's uh, two and a half by Looks like two and a half by three or five eighths. So I'm just going to do a rectangle and I'm going to anchor it at the center and I'm going to say it's at 1.25, comma, 0 0.3125. And that should give me the center width is 2.5, tab, and 0.65. And there we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to add my radius, which is going to be a quarter inch to these corners. And there we go. All right, so now I have my three profiles. Uh, all I need to do now is extrude them. So one thing I wanna do before I do that is I wanna name them and call them profiles on there. And I also wanna create a solid level as well. And I wanna work on that when I go to create this solid. Um, I actually do need to put some more stuff on profiles. So. I'm actually going to uh, keep working on that level here a second. So let's create an end line. So we need to create some connecting lines. And we're only creating these because this doesn't have the same amount of entities in each one. So this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight entities all the way around it. Whereas this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. So when I go to loft this, it won't know how to blend those surfaces together because there's different amounts of entities. If they were all the same, it would know by entity. It would just do it from entity to entity. But it won't be able to do that here. So I have to draw these lines so it kind of has a start and stop point of where to, uh, where to blend them. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and go into our solids. And from there, we're going to select loft. And we're going to get our wireframe chaining coming up. Okay, so 
We should be on seaplane here. We shouldn't be on 3D because we're not really. Oh, I guess we could be, but um, we're gonna we're gonna go off our seaplane, our construction plane, and we're gonna pick our setting options here. Now, when we sync this, basically, what the sync mode means, it means how it's going to blend these surfaces together. So we can't do it by entity because we have a different number of entities. So what we need to do is we need to do it by branch. Um, and basically what that means is it's just going to look at it from this point to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these. And it's very, very important that you select these so that they're all starting in the same spot and going the same direction. So if I were to select one like this and one like this, that's not going to work. In fact, I'll demonstrate it. Watch it work on me because uh, I'll get lucky or something. But no, you can see it, it didn't work. So I hit check. It's going to say no, there's a kernel interface error. Okay, so problem lofting surface is no good. So if you're getting that, means if you're getting an error like that when you're trying to do this, it means you're selecting them wrong. It means you are not watching this video the whole way through and, and selecting the way I am. So either that or you might have a geometry error. There might be a misconnected line or something like that. You might want to check that stuff out as well. Uh, you can always check your geometry by oops, going into, where's my chain at? Chain. And just making sure everything chains completely. But uh, let's go back into solids. I'll show you how to do these correctly. So if we go to loft, uh, just confirm. Yeah, it's still by branch. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this one here. I'm going to pick the beginning for that one. Notice they're all going the same direction. So I have them all three starting out at that point along that line, and they're all three going counterclockwise around if I'm viewing it from the right side plane. Uh, and now I'm going to hit check, and you can see there it immediately lofted it for me. Um, one thing I did not do there was put those on the correct level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit check and we're going to move that to a the correct level here. So let's go ahead and move that over to, oh, never mind, it is on solid, good. Okay, so check and if we turn that off, there we have just our solid visible. Okay, so with our solid visible, uh, actually I'm going to bring everything back on. And we're going to translate this, like I said. So I'm going to go to my planes. I'm just going to work on the top plane for everything now. And um, I guess what I'll end up doing here is I'm going to do a bounding box on this. So let me go to wireframe and select a bounding box. And this is my bounding box. And I'm just trying to think of how I want to create it. Uh, I don't want lines and arcs. I'm actually just going to put, I think I'm going to do corner points on it and hit check. Yeah. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. So I'm going to select everything and I'm just going to translate this vector from two and just go to zero, zero and move everything there. And hit check. Okay. And then I'm just going to go, I'm just going to delete these, these points because I don't really need them. Fortunately, you have to create all of those points, which is mildly annoying, but uh, not that big a deal. Okay. So now we have this thing where we want it so that our zero zero is our top and our back left hand corner is our Y zero, our XY zero, um, Z zero is obviously a top. So I go to front, uh, you can see there, we are at zero. And I'm gonna bring my stock up a little higher than that, just so we have it, uh, we could bring it down into Z, I guess, a little bit. Um, I'm gonna leave it where it is though, and I'm just gonna bring my stock up a little higher is all. So let's go to my top plane and top. All right, so we are pretty much ready for geometry, or sorry, for uh, tool pads. So what I'm going to do first is just turn off my profiles. So I just have my solid. And 
we're going to go select our machine. In this case, we're going to use a Haas 3D three axis mill. And I'm going to create my stock. I'm just going to hit all solids. And that should create it pretty close to where it needs to be. Um, you can see the size here is a little bit smaller than one inch. That's all right, let's make this one inch. Um, X is right, Y is pretty close, uh, close enough. I and mean, we're talking negligible decimal places there. So that looks pretty good. Um, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to just move my stock up a little bit. I'm going to go up 0 0.02 just so I have enough to cut off the very top there. There we go. So it's up a little bit above zero. And I'm just doing that for simulation purposes. That's all. Okay, so we are now ready to go ahead and apply tool paths to this. And uh, for this one, we're actually going to rough out with the parallel tool path. And what parallel does is it basically just creates parallel lines and just roughs it out with kind of like a zigzag pattern. Uh, it's a little more complex than that, but if you think about it, um, very basic, on a very basic level, it's more or less just a zigzag pattern. So I'm going to hit check, and I'm just going to triple click this thing. Oop, didn't get it. There we go. Uh, if you triple click it, it's going to click the whole solid. And I'm going to hit end selection. And since I'm roughing it, I don't really care if I get the whole solid. So it's not a big deal. So i got six drive surfaces, uh, which makes sense. This is a six-sided part. This is all considered one surface up top here. That's not made of multiple surfaces. Uh, let's see. We're going to use... A bull mill, I am not in the right tool crib. Aluminum, half inch with an eighth inch feed rate. We'd probably run this about 100 inches a minute. 12,000 RPM, we're gonna do a 25.0 plunge rate. Uh, our surface parameters. Uh, I'm gonna increase this to point, actually I'm gonna leave it where it is and just so you can see what happens in case this happens to you. We are gonna leave some on the drive surfaces, so I'm gonna leave 20 thou on here uh, just because of the kind of shape this is. And I'll leave the retract at 0.25, I think that should be okay. Uh, I'm gonna make this 0.5. And I think that should be all right. Uh, max step over, we're gonna make that point. Two maybe. Um, that, yeah, point two should be okay. It's a little bit less than half. Um, everything here looks pretty good. Max step down. Um, I'm gonna make this point two five. Actually, I'm gonna make my. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that at point two. Uh, I'm just trying to decide here. Allow negative Z motion. Basically, that's going to allow it to do is it's going to allow it to plunge and move in the X at the same time. So as it's cutting along that surface, it's going to be able to plunge down and come back up again. Um, and uh, yeah, that that should work. That should work great. So I'm also going to allow multiple plunges along the cut as well. Okay, so one-way roughing, step down, gap settings. Uh, I know your book has you go into some gap settings. I think it has you set this like 300% uh, of the step over. Uh, I don't really get into the gap settings very often. So it, it to me, you know, I don't, I don't really use them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click those off, and I'm not going to really set on any of those. I'm going to hit check, and you can see there... Looks like it's roughing that out pretty good. So let's take a look and see how that goes. Now I think there may be a bit of a, oh, no it didn't, okay. I thought that I might get a little bit of a, a crash here, but I did not. So everything looks good there. So that's roughed out pretty well. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to the finish pass. I mean, I'm happy with that. There's nothing there that I think that I would change, so. Um, I'm going to move on, and we're going to select our raster toolpath. So we're going to pick our raster, and we're going to make sure that we have zero on any of these faces. And for this, I'm going to hit shift, or actually, I'm just going to pick this face because it's all one face. I don't need to hit shift. Um, 
hit end selection because I only want to machine that face. All the rest are just vertical faces. I don't need to change those. Uh, tool path, I don't need a boundary chain for this. The tool tip is fine, center is fine. Uh, our tool, we are going to change this, however. We're going to change this to a ball mill, and I'm going to pick a half inch ball mill. And we're going to go uh, maybe 120 inches a minute, 12,000 RPM, and let's make a plunge rate of like 50. Because it's not really plunging into anything. There's really no material left on. Like there's like 20 thousands. So it's not like you have a big plunge that you really need to worry about that. Uh, the cut parameters. All right, so our step over, I think we could probably get away with 0 0.02. Now here it's going to tell you your scallop pipe. So if we do a 20,000 step over, it's going to give us a 2 10,000ths scallop pipe. I think I can live with that. So I'm going to leave that as is. Uh, my machining angle, this is just the angle it's going to use. And I believe zero because that would be three o'clock. X positive would be three o'clock. I believe that that will be back and forth um, the way that we are actually roughing it. And that's what I want. So we're going to stick with that zero. If we need to change it to 90, we will, but I'm pretty sure it's right the way it is. Uh, transitions are fine with smooth. Uh, steep shallow is fine. We don't need to do anything in there. Our 1.0 clearance plane would be good. Um, all this stuff is fine. We are going to minimize trimming. And ah, we are going to change our line arc. So we're going to turn all this stuff on. I'm going to turn my, excuse me, got the hiccups. I'm going to turn my smoothing on. Uh, we're going to do 30. 30 and 40 um, just kind of random numbers you try to divide it up pretty evenly you can do 33 33 and 34 that's fine too um, and everything there looks good so I'm gonna hit check and let's see what we get all right so that looks pretty good um, let's see how it simulates that looks fantastic so you can see there, we've got a really nice, what appears to be a consistent, pretty consistent surface finish. You're going to notice that it's probably looks a little rougher there, and that's just because it's it's mo it's mostly graphics. Um, it will tend to look a little rougher just because you're using the side of the cutter, but um, overall, it's you know that looks good. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it took us 10 minutes, roughly. I mean that's that's what they're estimating in Mastercam. That obviously can be wrong. But um, that's it for this, this lesson. So if you have any questions, uh, as always, you can see me during class or you can see me during my office hours.